and welcome to It Is Written Canada. Thank you for joining us. Many years ago, both Helen Northcott and Linda Butt had their lives transformed by the truths of the Bible and watching It Is Written. They studied the Bible study guides diligently and they gave their hearts to the Lord and were baptized, but they didn't stop there they felt compelled to dedicate their lives to serving God as Bible workers and to serving people wherever God led them. Our guests on It Is Written Canada today are both trained Bible workers who have taught men and women, boys and girls, the life-giving truths of the Bible and led them to put their faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Helen and Linda, welcome to It Is Written Canada. Thank you, it's really a pleasure to be here. So Linda, you and Helen have been friends for quite some time, both Bible workers. Can you tell us where you met and what kind of outreach you've done together? Okay. Well, we met at Hope Camp Meeting in BC and we've been friends for probably about 40 years. And we've done outreach in the community, um, door-to-door -door Bible studies. We've done vegetarian cooking schools together. And we um, endeavored to begin a um, branch Sabbath school in Port Perry. And we had, um, we had vegetarian demonstrations. We had um, Daniel seminars. We had church, um, uh, church uh, services going. Mm -hmm. And um, we've We've really enjoyed doing door-to-door -door and visiting people in the community. And we tried to find out what their interests were to see, you know, where we could do programs, like a spiritual things or um, vegetarian healthy things. We tried to find out what they were interested in doing. So you've really done some, some work. Being a Bible worker has to be a hard work thing. I know Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. And then he says, Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And that's something that I, I pray for on a daily basis is that men and women, women like yourselves, will become Bible workers. So what does it take to be a good Bible worker? I think a good Bible worker has to really believe in the Bible and love the Bible, love studying the Bible and has a strong belief that there's other people out there that really would like to study the Bible. And so that inspires you to go out and find them. And it's only the Holy Spirit that inspires people to want to know spiritual things and to study the Bible. And so we're pretty dependent on the Holy Spirit to sort of bring us together, right? It takes prayer, a lot of prayer, a lot of perseverance, there's a lot of obstacles out there. And I think if you have a solid um, relationship with Christ and um, a real desire to share the truth with others, I believe that this is uh, very important. Um, you have to be um, in love with Jesus yourself and love people so that you can share with them. So both of you have a love for the Bible. That's obvious. Where did it start for you? Well, when I started um, studying, I first went to the Baptist church. My mother sent me to the Baptist church because um, it was the closest one to us. It was five minutes away. And um, I really enjoyed going there because um, we learned about Jesus and we learned about the Bible. And um, that's basically where I found Jesus as my savior was in that church. So I, I really enjoyed going there and um, I had a lot of questions about different things. The Holy Spirit was leading me to study further into the scriptures. And so what happened was I decided, um, I was looking at Daniel Revelation around age 19. And I thought, you know, I was looking at these beasts and I thought, well, what does this mean? Somebody somewhere must know what this means. So I went to the pastor and I asked him and he, he says, oh, oh, that's a closed book. He said, we, we can't understand that. And I said, well, you know, somebody somewhere must understand this. I cannot believe that God would write a book and not explain it to us. So the next year I decided I would start my um, search, um, studying the Bible and searching for a group of people who would understand what this message meant. And it seems that my mother was praying for me during this time, which I didn't really know about. 
and um, she um, saw my deep interest in the scriptures. And so she had some really old Voice of Prophecy lessons. They were all yellow. And she says, well, here, you know, I says, Mom, how come you have all the answers and the pastor doesn't? So she hand me these <laughs> lessons, and I said, oh, good. So I was reading them and writing them, and then I said, well, some are missing, so I sent away for the missing lessons. Well, they started me at Lesson 1, took me right through Daniel Revelation, all the way through the whole series. And um, it was such a blessing to study those lessons. Also during this time, I was um, viewing It Is Written with George Vanderman on television, and um, so impressed with the truth and the knowledge he had and, and his spirit. And so I watched that. And also I went to evangelistic meetings with um, uh, evangelist Lawton Lowe. And um, then I was um, baptized by Pastor Shonder on March 31st, 1974. And I became an Adventist with the um, Seventh-day Adventist Church and became a member. So it was quite a process, and um, the Lord was leading me every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Linda, you discovered something about your mom and dad. Can you tell us what you learned about your parents and how they've changed? Well, my mother was always a Seventh-day Adventist, and um, I didn't know that until I started searching the Bible and she saw my interests. And um, my father was not, he was a Methodist. He promised my mother that he would join the Adventist Church, but he never did. He had a bad experience which affected him when he was young and it turned him off of all churches. So he really wasn't going to join any church. And so then um, my, um, my mother um, kept praying for me. And my dad, he, she wanted him to take him to church, but my mother couldn't drive because in those days the women didn't drive and he would not take her. So um, she just, I guess, kept praying that he would change. Um, he, he never did while she was alive, but um, when my mother died, he started reading the Bible and Great Controversy and Star of Ages, and he was very impressed um, with it, and he believed what he read, and um, he was looking forward to Jesus' return. So it's um, a shame my mother did not see that, but I was able to witness it, so I was happy about that. I think she will see it one day. Yeah, she will. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why your mom gave you the Voice of Prophecy Bible studies, because she had them at right. home, because she was an Adventist. Right. Yeah. My mm. mother had, um, she was a lay Bible worker um, in St. John's, Newfoundland, where she's from, oh. and she worked with the pastor. And um, to see my interest in Bible um, really, you know, did her heart good. <laughs> What about you, um, <laughs> Helen? <laughs> yes, I had a very uh, excited uncle, very passionate about the word, you know, and, and, and he was always sharing. I was a young girl and, you know, he was sharing, talking about the Bible and things like that. You know, but, um, you know, he started, stirred up an interest in that. And um, I think in my early teens, I was watching television and I saw the It Is Written telecast. And um, it was George Vanderman. And um, I liked what he was sharing on there. And they offered free Bible study guides. And so they mailed them out and you fill them in and then send them back, you get corrected and uh, send you some more. And, and then you get a certificate, you know, and I hey, this is fun, this is great, you know, and I'm learning, you know, and I'm learning more things. And so finally, um, Pastor Eric Jurians came by to um, check out you know, how my interest was going. And uh, so he wanted to study the Bible. I says, okay, fine, you know. He invited the family to be there, you know, and said, yeah, okay. But then, you know, the next time he came, you know, they'd hear the car coming in the driveway and say, Helen, the pastor's here for your Bible studies, you know, and they'd all stay in their rooms, you know. So it was just pastor and I that were studying. And um, so he introduced me to Kingsway College. So I said, okay, let's go up and see what Kingsway College is. I'm really kind of interested in a Christian education. And I had already put in my application um, at a St. Clair College, because uh, I was interested in legal, legal secretarial. And so I said to, uh, I was interested in Christian education, but I wanted to know. I said, okay, God, so um, if you want me to go up there for Christian education, then, um, St. Clair College will give me back my uh, entrance monies. 
and when I wrote a letter and told them what I was going to do and things like that, they sent me back my money. So I knew that God wanted me to come to Kingsway College. So Helen, can you tell us what led you to being baptized? Being out here, I became friends uh, with the pastor's daughter and they had me over for dinner. and. Uh, so we began talking. I was very comfortable. And um, of course, I'd been doing all of this studying before and things like that. And um, so he just asked me if I'd like to be baptized. And I said, yes, I would. So he obliged and we studied and I was baptized here at College Park Church. And uh, February the 13th, 1971, that's when I was 19 years old. And um, never looked back, never looked back. And then um, Helen, what led you to become a Bible worker? Okay, so I was working here as a uh, medical secretary and, and I was going to prayer meetings. And you go to prayer meetings, you know, usual kind of prayer meetings. But this particular time, and I think it was the only time that ever happened, someone came there and they were, they came and said, we're going to teach you how to give Bible studies. And, and everybody who comes tonight is going to go out with somebody tonight. And you're going to go give, do some Bible study work. And then you're going to come back here at the church and you're going to tell us your experience. Great. This is fantastic. I've never done this before. And I got, you know, I got the Bible, you know, work, you know, bug burning in me, you know. And so I really like doing this, you know. And um, so even when I was working in town, um, I decided that, you know, I want to go out and be trained. So I went to CUC and that's when I uh, completed my uh, Bachelor of Theology out there. And uh, I was hired by the Alberta Conference and I worked for them for two and a half years. And part of my uh, experience was when I came back, I was coming back to Toronto and I worked with Tracy Bravo and Henry Fire Robin and the work that they were doing for the Portuguese people. And I loved it. It's like I went, John the Baptist, I went before the evangelist, you know. I go into areas and try and prepare people for the evangelistic meetings and things like that. And I also wrote for the um, St. Paul uh, newspaper for over 10 months. I actually got a letter from It Is Written saying, thank you so much for writing these articles in the paper about Daniel 11. It was just an encouragement again from It Is Written Canada to keep on doing this kind of work of sharing the Bible with people, so. I see that both of you have your Bibles with you. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about your experience. Now let's look in the Bible itself. Is there a Bible text that both of you have probably different Bible texts that you go to. It's kind of a favorite Bible text or an encouraging Bible text, or maybe even a, a story in the Bible. Yes, my my favorite is not just the text, but is Psalm 103, and it says, "Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits." who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. So this is my favorite. <laughs> no matter what age I am, it's, everything's there. Forgiveness of sins, um, the, the healing of diseases, um, giving me things to satisfy my mouth. <laughs> and um, it's just the promise of renewing, you know, our strength in the Lord. And there's a, there's a praise there, right? Like it's praising, yes. bless the Lord. Absolutely. Can you continue to repeat that? I think that's good for us, isn't it? Absolutely. Just Absolutely. to be grateful. When you're grateful, you know, it that's encourages great. your own heart. And what about you, Linda? Well, my favorite book in the Bible has always been the book of John. And um, I chose this verse because I think it kind of sums up what the book of John is about. And um, it's John chapter 20, verse 31. And it says, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. It's kind of like a sister text to the it is written text, you know, about what is written um, in the Bible. And also I had another text, um, John 14, 6. And um, 
It says, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I think of Jesus. He's the eternal way. He's the eternal truth. He's the eternal life. And um, he lives today. He's, he's in heaven preparing a place for us. And um, I can't wait to see him. Amen. And I know um, for people who are watching, you know, Jesus does love you. And um, he wants you in his kingdom as well. Give me the Bible, star of goodness green, to cheer the wonder, Lord, and tempest toss. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beam. Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost, give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken, hold a face lamp to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till I shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, all my steps in light, and teach me the danger of these realms below. That lamp of safety o'er the gloom shall brighten, that light alone the path of peace can show. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combine. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Linda, can you tell us how you became a Bible worker? Uh, well, I was working downtown Toronto at an insurance company. And um, during that time, I became an, um, an Adventist because I went to the meetings. And um, I was not totally content with the job I had. I wanted to do something more. The Spirit was leading me to do something more. And um, so I went to one of the bosses and I told him, I was going to leave. I explained why I become, a, you know, Christian, and I, um, I want to do something for the Lord to serve Him. And they said, "Oh, you're making a very big mistake. You know, we'll we'll give you a job as, um, you know, in the accounting department. We'll train you to be a chartered accountant." And you know, they had all these glorious career job ahead of me. And I said, "I says no. I says I really believe the Lord is leading me um, someplace else." And so. Um, what I did was I, I quit my job, and I went to Kingsway for a year. Then I went to CUC for four years, and I took theology. I just felt drawn. Um, I really wanted to tell others about Jesus. And so um, what I did was I went to CUC, and um, I studied for four years. And while I was there, I had the opportunity of going to Yellowknife um, to go door to door to reach the um, Korean um, indigenous people up there. I also had the opportunity to go to Conklin, Alberta, um, to a um, indigenous, and uh, again, a Cree village, um, to do a VBS with, with the people there. And um, I really enjoyed working with, with um, the indigenous people. And um, so then, soon after that, um, during our training, um, my Roman and I um, went to um, door to door with our training, went knocking door to door. And um, my roommate and I found this lady who was interested in studying the Bible. So we started studying with her. And she told us one day, she said, you know, my husband's in prison. Could you go visit him? So we thought, yeah, sure. So we got the two of us and two other male students. The four of us went to the prison and we visited the, the inmates. We started, we had singing and we had a little sermonette and we 
uh, talk with the inmates, and they really enjoyed the personal conversation, you know, because they really wanted someone to listen to them. And um, we started that ministry. It was about the mid-1970s. And that ministry kept on until COVID today. So um, it was something that was, you know, that lasted. You know, when you're a Bible instructor and you're a female, there aren't many jobs in the ministry for us. And so I really pray that the Lord will, will give me work. And then the BC Conference um, decided to hire me as a Bible worker. Uh, it was like a self-supporting type of a setup, and Brad Thorpe was running it, and uh, he taught us personal evangelism, how to you know work with evangelistic meetings, and um, Elsa Cook, um, who has since passed away, was a, a lay Bible instructor, and she um, was trained me in doing door-to-door -door work, and then from there I was sent to Kelowna, B.C., where I worked uh, there for three years. This is where um, I met Nora, and her daughter Amber was on your program just, uh, I guess, a few months back. And so Nora and I sat together, and she was really a joy to work with. She was so open to the truth, and she just loved the Lord. And um, she um, decided that she would um, become baptized and become a member. To me, there's nothing more beautiful than watching someone give their heart to Jesus. That just, it, to me, it's, it's the most satisfying work you can possibly do. Yes. Helen and Linda, how are you both involved in your local churches now? My local church is Chatham, Ontario, and I was instrumental in getting a branch Sabbath school started there. There used to be a little church there years ago, well, probably 35 years ago now. And uh, so it's been wonderful because God has just brought uh, people that are Filipinos and the, some Spanish people. And, uh, and it's just, we started out with about five or seven of us, and now it's grown to 25. And um, so we're just really excited to keep it growing. And um, we uh, have been blessed by places to uh, meet and we're continuing to work on that that's, aspect of it as well. That's really awesome. So you're in the Chatham Church, but you started your branch Sabbath school in the in the Dresden, uh, Ontario, Dresden, Ontario area. That's mm -hmm. it's beautiful. We've been there, and uh, it's just growing. And you're really instrumental in uh, being a part of that. Amen. Thank you. What about you, Linda? Um, currently, I am teaching Sabbath school uh, via Zoom, and I'm also I'm a church member and myself are studying the Bible with a lady who is very interested in studying the Bible and loves the Lord, and so we're studying with her. That's awesome. So we've got two final questions. First of all, as Bible workers, do you see that people are more or less interested in receiving Bible studies today? I feel that um, different decades, there's different responses. But I think with people looking at the environment and seeing things happening today, that they are really starting to question things and questioning where they're coming from and is there really a God? And I, I, I believe the interest is, is uh, growing. Mm, they're seeing wars, they're seeing unexplainable things, sickness. Earthquakes, people having more problems with their health and um, you know, their mental peace. And they're just feeling that um, there's got to be more. So they're looking for answers. Yeah, I, I think the key is responsiveness and um, the Holy Spirit works with people on a very personal, individual basis um, for us to number that, to try to put a number on, you know, whether they're more responsive or not responsive. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like limiting the Holy Spirit because we need to be working with the Holy Spirit because if the Holy Spirit's working with them, then we should be able to be matched up, right? Sure. And Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. So there's a lot out there who are looking. We just right. need more people like yourself. I really like what you're doing because it's, like you said, it's a heart of love. And right. love means hard work, getting yes. out there and doing that work. <laughs> Do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share with our viewers? Um, I would like to say that at the time when I was in the Baptist church, I remember standing on the balcony and looking around the church and um, realizing that this is the last time I was going to worship in this church. And um, so it was not easy to leave, but I knew I had to follow my heart. I had to follow the Holy Spirit, and I had to follow the truth. So I left that church, and I, I prayed that one day this church would become a Seventh-day Adventist church. And many years later, 
Um, it was sold several times. And amazingly enough, the Seventh-day Adventists actually purchased that church. So when I went back to visit again later, I went there not as a Baptist, but as a Seventh-day Adventist. So the <laughs> Lord really answered that prayer. And I'd just like to say that, you know, those of you who are searching and who are looking, um, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. He died for you. He was resurrected for you. He's living for you in heaven and preparing a place for you. And He can't wait to share that place with you. Mm, thank you, Linda. So, I'm going to give the final word a prayer. I want you to pray for us, Helen. Pray for our viewers. Yes, there may absolutely. be someone who's struggling right now. That's right. And they're listening. And they're, maybe they're struggling to believe in God or to believe that mm -hmm. there is some answer to what they're going through. Maybe you can pray for them right now. Yes, let's do that. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit. We're thankful for it is written. We're thankful that they offer the Bible studies that people can find the answers that, that they're looking for. Help those that are struggling, Lord. May they respond to that uh, measure of faith that you've put in their hearts so that they can um, find their way to you and find your way to uh, the people of God that love Jesus and keep the commandments. Continue to bless each one at um, It Is Written. You know everyone's responsibilities here, and we pray that you'll um, continue to bless and guide them and help them to share their faith so that um, people will know that Jesus is coming soon, and we want to be ready, and we want to help others to be ready as well. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Helen and Linda, thank you so much for joining us on Eddie's Written Canada today and for sharing your experience as Bible workers with us. Thank you. It's been a real privilege. We really enjoyed it. Yes, thank you. It's been a pleasure and uh, we've really enjoyed it very much. Friends, you too can experience the kind of transformation that only God's Word offers. So our free offer today is our Bible study guides. Whether you want to learn the major teachings of God's Word or Bible prophecy, we can assist you to find answers for how to face the issues and challenges you may be dealing with right now. Before you go, we would like to invite you to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also listen to our podcasts. And if you go to our website, you can see our latest programs. You too can experience the fullness of life finding the words of Jesus when he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God.